All right, so if you found this video, you're probably looking for how to put a drop down list in Google Sheets. We'll talk about what that means and we'll use a situation to put one in the easy way and then we will extend it and look at some of the kind of next level things that you can do with drop down lists. I'll see you in the video. All right, so we get, we get a phone call and it's from, let's say, Hank. All right, and Hank wants a hot sandwich. So this is our in-depth menu up here. This is the different types. And then later we're going to get into how to uh, put in the items that are underneath those types. Uh, but first uh, we'll say, we're just looking to get the type of order. So, you know, if, if he says cold sandwich and, and one employee types it like this, right? Uh, you might not know what that means. So you want the whole, uh, all the words to get put in there. So the solution to that uh, is to left click on the cell, go to drop downs, and we're going to put a drop down list into that cell. I'm actually going to put it into the entire column going down to the end of the spreadsheet. So the first thing that we're going to do once this sidebar comes up is to be confused as to why it's called data validation rules, right? So you can ignore that. It's just that drop downs are a way to validate the data. So this sidebar isn't called uh, drop downs like it probably should be. But we will say uh, the apply to range. So that's where to put the drop down. It already guessed B9 because that's where we have uh, selected the cell. But we're going to say do it all the way to the bottom of column B. So we will say colon. B, and I think it goes to row at 1000 because that's a default for Google Sheet. We'll just leave that number off completely and then it will go all the way down. So that's our apply to range and let's click out of that. And if you look at column B as I do that, it puts all the drop down lists in there. All right, so we're moving along. The two options that you have that are relevant to this are drop down and drop down from a range. We're definitely going to do drop down from a range, but just in a little bit. So we're going to stick with the more simple option right now of just a drop down. So select that. And then uh, you can just type the four options in. So we will say cold sandwich. Add another item. We will say hot sandwich. Add another item. We'll say salad and add another item, we'll say soup. So if you don't think you'll be changing the values, you can do it this way, won't ever cause a problem. And you can also add colors. So let's say a cold sandwich will be blue, right? Hot sandwich will be kind of reddish. Salad will be greenish. And then a soup, let's make it, let's make it this color. Maybe that's cream of broccoli or something. Uh, you can also go to customize and then you can change the fo font color in the background independently to whatever you want, but we'll say we're not that picky. And now what you've done to this point of view, you, you've actually made a functional dropdown list. So if you click done, it will apply it to that entire range and let's try to use it. So let's go into B9 and here they are. Right, so they kind of look nice with those colors. So if you're just typing them in, you can do the colors and make it a little, little cooler looking. And as I go through these, you notice, right, there's no typos because there can't be because you're just picking from a list. Uh, but one thing that you can do is depending on the settings, someone still could just type into here. Uh, and is it whatever I just typed and the way to handle that is what we're going to go through next. So you can specify what to do when that happens. This, uh, what just happened was, uh, it gave a, some help text and it tells us that we have to enter one of the following. And if we click okay, it gets rid of it. So I'll show you why. So let's go back to these rules. And when you look at the advanced options, so you see it's set to reject the input. So if you want to allow people to do it and just give them a warning, change that to show warning, but we'll leave it on reject the input and you can customize the message that they get if you want to type something in here. So if you just want to say, be careful, uh, remember what we talked about in our meeting about dropdowns. Sounds like an exciting meeting. Uh, that can pop up. 
We're still rejecting the input. And then while we're in here, let's just change it. Uh, look at column B as I do this. So you can make it just an arrow. It kind of changes the fundamental look of how that background fills in. Uh, or you can just completely hide it and make it plain text. And then you don't really know there's a drop down until you go into the cell. But we're going to keep it on chip. Just think it looks nicer. And we'll click done for now for that error message to happen, error message. And then here we'll type, hit escape key, type test, hit enter. And it says that this is our custom message we just did. And you click okay, it kicks that value back out. All right, so those are the basics of how to create a drop down menu. And if that's all you wanted to do, then you're done, right? But we're going to extend this a little bit so you can learn kind of some of the more advanced things that you can do with drop downs. And if you remember these, they might come in handy uh, when you need them next time. Uh, so let's get rid of that sidebar for now. And what we want to do is uh, we're going to use the second option where we're going to select the items from a range. So let's go back to column B first. Uh, so we do this one layer at a time. We will right click, go back to drop downs, and instead of drop down, plain drop down, well, let's do drop down from a range. And then we're going to pick up the values from here. So I have them typed out already. So now you're seeing why. Uh, for E2 through E5 is where they are. So I will type that in. You could also select it with your mouse if you wanted to. And one thing to remember, so as these shift down, so whenever you type these in, uh, they, it, the, these references only apply to one row at a time. But if you always want to look at E2 through E5 and you don't want it moving down, you need to put dollar signs before the rows. So that makes it at least a partially fixed cell reference. And if you have no idea what that means, I'll link to a video right now about different types of cell references. So there's dynamic and the cell references move around. There's fixed, they don't move around. Um, and there's more info there if you wanna watch that. But if not, just do it this way, trust me. And we will click done. And I made a small mistake there because I didn't have the entire range selected. So let's, she was smart enough to catch that. We'll say apply to all. So it put it back in this one rule that covers everything. And what has happened is that now these items are coming from this list. So it dropped the styling. You can redo that if you want. But when we're um, changing things here, you might notice that the styling, um, you might not want to redo it all the time. Um, but so that will segue into the next thing is that we can change these items that are coming into the list without retyping them. All right, so let's hit escape. And let's say instead of salads, now you're offering uh, appetizers. We'll say apps for short. If you had hit enter, it got mad because you have salad in row nine and row 11, but salad's not an option anymore, okay? Because it updated the list. So if you click in here, uh, the four options are available. Salads is not one of them. So you can change that to apps. So now this list, this drop-down list is more dynamic and you can update it. If you have a list of a hundred items, they're driven by different factors. That can really come in handy. Uh, but for now, we're going to switch that back to salads because the things to the right are salads, right? And you'll see why that matters coming up next. Let's change this back to salads. Oh, I put an S on the end, salads. We'll leave it that way. Well, no, we can't do that because this is hot sandwich, singular. This has got to be singular too. We're taking the S off. We got to get this right. Salad, salad. Okay, so we've covered inserting the data validation just by typing in the items we've covered doing it from a range and now we're going to look at using that concept of a range to make a one list dependent on the other so in this case when i select salads i only want the options in the next drop down menu to be a house salad a chicken salad or a greek salad so this will give even a finer level of control over what people enter on this list so what I mean here is if I go into B9 and I click salad like it was, 
I want another drop down list here to only show the three types of salads. So we have to do a little bit of trickery to get that to work. And that is our going to be our one formula. And we'll put it right here. You might want to hide it on another sheet or just put it further off to the right. Um, chances are what you're doing doesn't look exactly like this. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's a little bit um, maybe confusing to the user to have it right here, but I wanna show it to you all in one place so you can see how it's working. We're going to use the XLOOKUP formula. I'll link to how to use that right now if you want to uh, watch a video. I'll also put a link in the description to some uh, a web page about it because it's a relatively new formula. But all it does is, in, in uh, plain speak, it uh, if you put salad in B9, it goes and looks at the types of salad. That's all it does. So we're going to say XLOOKUP, find the value in B9. So that's salad look it up in this list, return what's in this list. The only modification we need to do from that is what we just talked about where we make these references fixed. So we'll, we'll put in some dollar signs in here. And that should work. So, there we go. When you have salad, it comes up to this list, find salad, returns these three items. Let's drag this down. It's going to be magical. Get yourself ready. If I can use my mouse. And when you did cold sandwich, it came, found these three items and returned them. I'm actually going to shift this one to the right. It'll make it a little bit easier to look at because I just confused myself a second ago. All right. Now these are in line. So the cold sandwich, and we'll look at one more hot sandwich, burger, French dip, Reuben melt. All right, so I'm wondering why I did this. You probably have a good guess, and that's because I want to hook my second drop downs into this list. So what we will do here is we're going to right click again. We're going to do insert, or not insert, we're just going to say drop down and apply to range. So this is where we're going to bring it all the way down to the bottom of column C and the criteria is from a range and the range is going to be so you write this as if you're in the top of the range so we're writing this as if we're in c9 and c9 would be looking at f9 through i9 which is where these values are or where they could be in this case i have a blank in i9 but that's okay and then we want to I don't think we want to fix that value. I'm trying to think, yeah, we don't want dollar signs in there. So that's good. We will select done. And here's the moment of truth. So we selected salad. Let's come to the drop down list. That's working. It just limits that to the types of salad. If you change this to hot sandwich, then that's going to show just the types of hot sandwiches. I feel weird talking about food in a spreadsheet. I'll get over it. So before you implement this in your spreadsheet, uh, you're probably already using Google Sheets, but consider using Google Forms to flow into Google Sheets. So a lot of these dropdowns and dependencies can be taken care of in Google Forms first, and it presents a simpler in interface to your user. They don't even have to see the spreadsheet. I'll link to a video about Google Forms right now. <laughs> Thanks for watching.